Good. Okay, so we don't have anyone watching just yet, so if we can just give it a minute and give people the chance to uh, rejoin. Do you mind, Cecily, do you mind going and gutting like three mice, weigh them out? Yeah. Um, that way I don't have all sorts of chunks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just yeah, let me know, sure. like, they, just see what three way and bring okay, it back. Sounds good, sounds good. <laughs> so that was all online. That's fine. <laughs> okay. That's, so that's food prep. That's food prep. I was aware of that. So, uh, <laughs> so we've got two people watching so far. Hello. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Yeah, guys, sorry if um, they can't hear you. Oh, there we go. We're back. We're back. Sorry guys, we're having some problems with the heat today. Um, it's in the 30s out here in Kamloops. Um, and that quality iPhone keeps shutting down from the heat. <laughs> we're not promoting Androids here, but just saying the iPhone <laughs> keeps shutting down. So sorry if you missed that. We um, did start bringing Gontran, our turkey vulture, out. And then the phone shut down from the heat. Um, and this was the second bird. Gone again? Okay, but the stage, um, unfortunately, is in direct sunlight. Um, and the back of the stage is kind of a rock wall, so it doesn't help with the Wi-Fi. Um, so tap with us um, for today's demo. So instead, I've got Rogue just on the glove giving her some lunch time. As you can see, she's very keen for her food. And Rogue is a very special girl. So she is. She came to the park in 2010. Oh, sorry, she is a red-tailed hawk first, for anybody that doesn't know. Found all across BC pretty much drive down the highway and you're probably gonna see a red tail within 10 or 15 minutes look on a light post or up into the sky now normally they have this lovely see your wings please the lovely kind of white lighter colors um, rogue here is actually what we call a dark morph um, really brown rusty colors so she's a bit darker than your usual red tail but what makes them distinguishable is obviously the tail so you can see the red feathers really pretty and she is, they are, the largest. second second largest hawk in North America. She is a female, which makes her larger than the males as well. Females are about a third larger than males when it comes to the raptor world. Wow. And that generally comes from taking care of the young sitting on the nest. A little bit bigger. How much do they weigh? She weighs about 1,200 grams, 1 1.2 kilos. Um, in the summertime, I have to give her a nice little diet to keep her on that weight. Um, to bring her out, exercise her, and train her. And then in the winter time, it gets quite cold, obviously in Canada, um, and it's a bit dangerous to try to keep them on a weight control system then. So I feed her up, give her lots of food so she's got extra fat to burn off in the winter time. And then come springtime, we put her on a diet and repeat the process again. Now, she, as I was saying, is very unique and very special um, part of my collection. And the reason I say that, um, over 20 years of keeping, and over half of that has been in falconry, um, I've never worked with rescued or rehabbed birds. I've always worked at organizations where you get captive animals in, which is the birds I use for my shows. But Rogue here um, was brought in in 2010 after being struck by a vehicle. So you might notice she's actually missing her left eye on the glove. So she's been here since 2010. Oh, you got the, you got the leash with it. <laughs> and normally you would start training a hawk when they're young. So we didn't do that with her. Um, the vets decided not to release her back into the wild. Um, so she kind of stayed here as a bit of an ambassador bird and almost a part of our education program. So she trained to hop up on the glove quite nicely. Um, she will sit comfortably as long as she's getting food. After a while, she basically just kind of wants to go back and rest and relax in her aviary. So as the moment, she's still looking down for more food. Um, I have a colleague that's going to be bringing me um, a couple mice out here so you can see her swallow them whole, as opposed to the little pieces that I'm giving her. So missing an eye, missing a talon. Um, she didn't get released into the wild, but you'll notice her wings are good. Her wings still work. Um, so as a falconer, my job is to train birds to come outside and do free flight demos. So any bird in my collection that I have, I'm going to bring it out daily to fly. If her wings are broke, I can't do that. But an eye injury and a talon basically have just slowed down her training. Um, I keep it nice and simple. We don't do long flights that you might see other birds flying over people's heads. Um, I wouldn't trust her for that kind of stuff with her vision impairment. All I want to do is literally bring her outside every day, get her to fly from one spot to the next um, for small rewards like she just had. If she's getting those rewards, technically in her little head, she's hunting each day. So to keep her happy, I'll bring her out. She'll fly to a few spots, get rewarded for those few spots. She'll fill up the belly, or fill up her crop, sorry. And then she basically wants to go back and sit in her enclosure and do nothing and then repeat the whole process again the next day. 
That's pretty much the typical life of a raptor. <laughs> A crop, so that's essentially where all the food goes in to begin with. So when a bird swallows the food, you can just bring it on over. There are still holes you want them cut? Uh, no, okay. holes perfect. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so the crop is where the food goes first. It's kind of like a first stomach, a muscular sac. All the food goes in there. It will digest all the good stuff. will go down into the belly. And in the crop will remain bones, fur, feathers, fins, depending on what the animal's eaten, the stuff they can't digest. And then that stuff comes back out every day in the form of a pellet. Most people have um, dissected owl pellets in school, that kind of stuff. You can open up and actually see what the animal's been eating. So I've gotten some mice for her. Um, she prefers, when she's on the go, I like to give her nice big rewards. So why not a whole mouse as opposed to pieces? So what would, a, uh, what would they eat in the wild? In the wild, you would see them eating marmots, oh, really? squirrels, snakes, pretty much anything they can grab <laughs> off the ground. They will, unfortunately, eat Roadkill as well, which kind of brings me back to her eye issues. What happened with Rogue being struck by a car, a lot of people do ask, why would a hawk be down at the side of the road getting struck by a vehicle? Well, unfortunately, what we do, and I used to be it's not garbage, it should be okay. Well, unfortunately, what happens is small animals come up to eat that apple core and they get struck by a vehicle she might go down to eat that animal and then she's down on the ground. Now when raptors grab onto something, if they want to kill it or even just grab on to carry it away, they use very powerful feet and they can't let go very easily. So they'll be holding on to an animal and they'll try to fly off with it and it'll take longer for them to get lift off the ground, which means they'll end up getting struck by cars. So essentially if you're throwing any food at the window, you're setting up a restaurant at the side of the road. So don't ever throw any food at the window is a simple moral of the story. If anyone has any questions, just feel free to drop them in the comments section below and Jamie can answer those for us. Uh, we actually have one viewer from Poland. Oh wow, So that's nice. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Now red-tailed hawks, like I said, are quite popular or populated out here in, in um, BC. We're not doing any breeding programs with them because they are so abundant. In fact, a lot of people keep them for falconry as well. Now, if you look at the feet of a raptor, that is the dangerous part. They do have a sharp beak, um, but they rip up pieces of food with their beak, but they kill with those feet. Even raptor means to seize and carry away, repair in Latin. So very powerful feet, incredibly powerful feet, in fact, hence the reason I have this equipment on her. If you want to put a collar on your dog to take him for a walk, that's perfect. You can't put a collar on a bird. Obviously, you would hurt him. So the legs are very powerful. We put equipment on called Jess's and anklets. Anklets go around the ankles and the jesses are literally leather straps so I can hold on to the bird. Now as we had planned on flying and training her, I will attach another device called a crayons, which is simply um, a fancy word for string on a stick. It's like flying a live <laughs> kite um, and that way you can train the bird without them flying off if they get spooked, which is ideal for her missing the eye. Um, you don't really get the same kind of recall and training program or progress you would um, with a hand raised hawk or one that's been taken after the parents raised it. And you can see she's calming down now. Um, once her crop starts to get full, she essentially now will just want to go back to her enclosure, sit and do nothing. Watch the world go by, as I like to say, for a raptor, and then repeat the next day. Oh my gosh. Uh, how far can they fly at one time? Uh, literally, they could soar around almost all day, um, if you like. Now, depending on the type of bird, these guys, red-tailed hawks, if you watch them, they've got a, they're called a broad-winged species. So they literally evolved for soaring. So it's not really so much distance. They could flap their wings a couple times, hit some air currents, and then just glide and soar around for hours on end looking for food. Wow. Uh, we don't know how old she is um, because she was struck by a vehicle. Now, raptors, when they're molting, which is when they're usually, or sorry, losing old feathers and regrowing new ones, uh, you can tell a juvenile red tail hawk because it won't have the red tail feathers to begin with. But when she came in, she had her red tail feathers so we knew she was an adult, but we don't really know how old from there. So, so when do they get those red feathers? Um, that's after about a year or so, the, the, ter the tail will at least change, start molting and changing into more adults, adult um, plumage. Wow. Um, we have viewers from England, and they're wondering what her name is and how heavy she is. Her name is Rogue, um, and she weighs about 1.2 kilograms, um, for those asking her name and weight. Uh, whereabouts in England does it say on there? I spent 10 years in the UK at London Zoo, which oh. is where I did my falconry, so you might have some in-laws or people oh, out there. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it doesn't say where, just England. Um, 
How many babies do they have? Uh, well, they will lay eggs. Generally, you're going to have two or three eggs would be a good average for them. Um, depending on the season and how much food's around, how successful they are at rearing them. Um, most, unfortunately, most hawks don't survive in the first couple years. That's the critical part of their life. Um, being young, scavenging, winters are harsh. Um, if they make it through the first few years, then tend to be a successful bird from there on in. They make it through the first 10 years? No, first few years, sorry. Oh, sorry. First few okay. years. Yeah. Wow. Into full adulthood, more or less. And do they mate for life? Uh, generally not. Um, most raptors, well, some do actually. Uh, red tails, I'm pretty sure red tails don't though. I would honestly have to double check that yeah. um, to make sure. I'm not 100% sure with the red tail. Is it the, um, the male and female that raise? A few troubles getting it down. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so they will help um, raise the young together. Wow. Like I said, the males are a little bit smaller, so the females can kind of be a bit more of the bully and make sure the dad's being a proper dad and helping out, <laughs> helping out raising the kids properly. And then who builds the nest? Do they keep just one nest? They will, they yeah, and they can come back to it. Um, the fe they will both build it, but the females are notorious more for building, nest building. Oh, cool. You can see she's starting to get warm, so... Oh. When it does, like I said, we're up in the 30s here today in Kamloops, so you can see her mouth open, wide open like a dog panting. That's essentially her way of cooling down. Wow. And so where, um, where do they primarily live? Do they live, do they enjoy the heat? Like, is Kamloops a natural? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they're all around Kamloops. I'm um, sorry, yeah, they are found pretty much, um, actually, all of North America. Um, oh. Wide distribution. Pretty much everywhere, almost anywhere you go across migrate? Canada. Uh, no. No? No, they'll stick around all winter. Well, if anyone has any final questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section below. And uh, sorry, the viewer is should have said, hi, Uncle Jamie. Oh, How are you, you doing? Go. Daniel Johnson. Oh, nice. Yes. Hey, Dan, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, guys. Um, unfortunately, everything overheated today. Um, when we started off with our vulture, the cameras and everything shut down. So um, we've came back to just a bird on a glove to keep things simple so we could actually get, get something out exactly. there for you. Uh, how far can they see? Uh, you can say, wh what I like to say is if you're looking at, it's kind of hard if you're not here to point at something. Um, I've been able to say they can read the date off of a newspaper from like 100 meters away, that kind of stuff. So it's easier if you're here to point at something and say. Um, but they've got, well, eyes like a hawk, right? So they can soar several, not, I wouldn't say miles, but climb it up in the sky, see dots down on the ground. So incredible vision. Wow. That's basically what they rely on for hunting is their eyes. Big broad wings. For soaring, and then eyes like a hawk for pinpointing any small prey and rodents and stuff down on the ground. And what's their sense of smell like? Uh, not very good at all. Oh. Yep. So you don't really generally get a sense of smell with most birds. Um, you do with the vultures, really keen sense of smell. Um, but raptors, hawks, and eagles tend to not have any sense of smell. Um, there is some discussion about possible seabirds and sea eagles and stuff like that having a sense of smell um, to catch the scent of fish and stuff coming in off the, off the ocean and currents. Has she ever nipped you? No, thankfully no. not. Nope. She's actually, for being a wild bird, she's really well behaved. Um, as you can see, the, she's not really a biter. The problem is, is she would grab you with the feet. Oh. And that's generally the problem or cause of any issues or injuries from raptors is their feet, not so much their, their bites. I mean, they have a powerful bite, but they like said some birds, I'd have to check the exact pounds per square inch of pressure on a red tail hawk's feet. Um, but the larger eagles and stuff, you can get up to 300 pounds per square inch of pressure. Um, each foot has been compared to like a Rottweiler's jaws, that kind of stuff. So incredibly powerful feet. You could probably ask our rehab section more about, uh, or our vets more about okay. injuries. Hence, I do wear an extremely thick leather glove. Yes. Hi, Precious. All right, well, we can start to wrap things up then if, uh, if no one has any other questions. Do you have anything that you wanted to add, Jamie? I don't think so, other than the fact that anybody that does come to the park, um, unfortunately this year's a little bit different because of COVID. Um, normally I would take her out on the stage and do some, some flight demos so you can see her up close and take pictures afterwards. Hopefully we can get back to that in the future. Um, we don't know how things are going to be. Um, but anybody that does actually come to the park um, and supporting the park, you're actually helping animals like Rogue. Um, it's not just the animals you see in the park, but we do a lot of rehab and rescue rehabilitation and it simply wouldn't be possible we're a charity organization um so a massive thank you to anybody that supports the park we wouldn't be here without you That's wonderful sorry i do have one more question um you mentioned that she eats mice and rats and whatnot yes so um 
would would they be able to tell if they were about to um, eat a rat that had say ingested any kind of rat? Unfortunately like not, no. no. And quite often a lot of animals, if they see an injured or sick animal, they think that's a natural thing and will go attack it because it's easier to kill. Um, so no, they wouldn't have any, any clue they've consumed a rodent that has consumed any poisons or toxins or anything. So yeah, don't use that kind of stuff. <laughs> Talons? Yes. Her talons? Oh, Ooh, there's a rouse. Like that. That's a happy bird, basically. Oh. She's very content. A nice big rouse. So her talons, as you can see, I can kind of show them off there. They're a pretty decent size. Good inch or so curled. Um, that's not even the largest one, so you can see some of the bigger ones. Um, I wouldn't do that with um, any other bird. She's very, very relaxed, as I said. Um, she's a gentle girl. So you're looking about an inch and a half, maybe, for the largest talon. And then you can see her little stubby toe there where she lost a talon um, after her car injury. And what she's doing now is literally going, I want to go back and rest in my Avery and do nothing and then we can do this all again tomorrow, please. Oh. <laughs> so I just noticed she has three talons that face forward. Yep, and, and then, then one that goes back. Oh. And so Which the back one is generally like the killer talon, if you like. The first three will grip really? in and hold and that back one is what's the, uh, the more pressure even comes from that. Oh, so that's how they kill their prey yep. by using their talons versus... All talons, oh. yeah. Now, if you start talking about falcons, like a peregrine falcon, falcons have what you call a tooth. Um, it's basically the shape of their beak, has a funny kind of square notch to it, and they will tend to kill more by using their beak to sever a vertebrae of a bird. Um, but in general, raptors are known for their, well, like I said, raptor, rapier, is that, and for um, grabbing, seizing, and carrying away, which is what the feet evolved for. Vultures just get thrown into the big group as well, but they just have big chicken-like feet, but then they have a very powerful beak for ripping open carcasses. Mm. Um, and uh, so I know, I know she's not out here right now. Um, uh, sorry, Gontran. Yep. Um, so you were about to tell us a couple of quick things about Gontran. Yes. You wouldn't mind. So oh yeah, not a problem. <laughs> uh, Gontran, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so Gontran, I was saying, he's kind of a funny bird that we brought out because he's hand-raised, so he loves some people, doesn't like other people. Um, and essentially what I try to do, I get him out there soaring around. So I don't know, I think we cut off pretty quick. I don't even know if we got a, a full flight in with him, um, which is unfortunate. Vultures are fantastic animals. Um, like I said, they're, they're known for being around death, disease, and all this kind of stuff. The undertakers of the, of the environment, if you like. Um, but they're incredibly important. Um, Gontran, a turkey vulture, is a New World vulture. And when we talk New World, we're talking about North America, South America. It's the Americas. And if we're talking Old World vultures, we're talking Africa, India, Asia. Over there, those vultures have decreased in population by 99%. They've dropped faster um, than even the dinosaurs did um, in a short period of time. And it's unfortunately from a medication that people use for cattle in India and over there. So there's a drug to help with arthritis with cattle. Cattle are sacred in certain areas. The cattle die. They have, um, I think it's called diclofenac. I haven't said it in ages. So I think, I'm thinking I'm getting that right. right? Um, and essentially what happens is the cows die. Loads of vultures will feed off that one cattle and they're all dead within 48 hours. So a vulture, even though it has the capabilities of digesting um, anthrax, botulism, salmonella, like I said, they literally clean the environment. Um, they can't digest this medicine and it kills them quick. So they've had a huge drop off in numbers and if vultures drop off then disease is going to rise. So they're incredibly important. Um, so there's a lot going into educating the locals out there using different medications. Of course the cheaper or the other alternative is normally more expensive so it makes it more difficult for people to purchase it to use it. Um, but a lot of work has gone into that um, vulture conservation. So North Americans though like Gondran, the turkey vulture, they're doing okay. Um, that medication's not being used, so they haven't had a drop in the numbers. Um, you'll see them flying around Kamloops. Um, they're kind of spread across Canada. They do migrate. They do go south, though. It's a bit cold, obviously. Um, feeding off dead carcasses in the winter in Canada doesn't really work so well for a vulture. Um, so incredible digestive system. Really strong stomach acids. It's been said they can digest soft metals. Um, I used to joke if it pooped on your car in the morning, you'd have a convertible by the afternoon. Um, so incredible birds, um, bald heads, um, very unique to raptors as well, or to any bird really, the bald head. Simple, um, it keeps it clean. If you've got a bald head, you can stick it inside blood and bloody carcasses and carrion. When your head comes back out, you can sit in the sun. The sun will just dry it up and flake and clean it off. If you had feathers over your entire head, you'd be soaked in blood and guts, and you'd be impossible to keep clean. Um, other fun fact with vultures, um, if you look at their legs, they're white. 
Um, that, if you notice bird poop, it's normally white, so that's the urate, so the urine in it. Um, so vultures, in order to thermoregulate, will poop down their legs. Poops down, it evaporates, and it helps keep them cool. Um, to help ward off predators, um, vultures will projectile vomit at their animals. So they'll be eating, 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 and something comes at them, they'll throw up at them, and then fly off, which is a great deterrent. I'm pretty sure not many people are going to hang around if somebody's projectile vomiting at you. Um, so all those kind of nasties that do add up with the vultures, funnily enough, they're probably one of the most important species on the planet for keeping everything clean. Oh, that's so fantastic. They're gorgeous animals, but they don't get the reputation for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, um, I think maybe um, an encounter like this would be fantastic. With Gontran? with Gontran? We can. We, um, can we can actually do that more in the fall. Okay. Um, when he's on his summer weight like this and he's out here, he's just keen to fly. So he likes, he wants to go out, spread his wings, fly around, feed off the bones, do his whole routine. Um, and if he's on the gov, he just gets a bit too excited and antsy. Um, but come fall, and it starts to get a bit cooler, we could easily do a, an up close with Gontran. Awesome. That sounds great. Wonderful. Well, if anyone has uh, any requests for any upcoming um, virtual encounters or feed talks, just let us know in the comments section, and we will do our best to, uh, to book, uh, sorry, schedule one of those for you. So thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Did you have anything to I think I'm all that? good. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. See you later.